Hi, fellow YouTubers. My name is Bob Straight, and today we are talking about Star Wars Battlefront. I have a lot of experience when it comes to the previous Battlefront titles, and this one 100% meets my expectations. I don't take that the wrong way. This game is by no means a sequel to the previous Battlefront game. Now, just because this game doesn't feel like a sequel doesn't mean that this isn't a good game. Some of the things that are not in this game that were in the previous game, and one of the biggest ones for me is that there are no class systems. Them. Do know that I'm a super big Battlefield player, so a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about have kind of derived from me playing that game so much. But this point in particular, I really do think needs to be implemented into the game. It probably will never happen. It will never happen because of the way that they've set up the game and the way that everything else in the game works really doesn't play towards the fact that they may in the future add a class system. But what a class system adds to the game is a sense of teamwork between you and your squad mates. If there's one overall tone that I got from this game is that you really weren't meant to play this game with other people. This is more of a solo type game, and I really, really don't like that about this game. Don't get me wrong, it's still a good game, but that's one big drawback of this game is that it's really difficult to play with friends. This game has a partner system where you can partner up with one other person and it will basically take you into games together and make sure that you guys don't get split up. It doesn't work all the time, but the majority of the time it works flawlessly. But if you want to play with more than one person, this game has a giant load of complete and utter sh** to try and get you into the same game at least. And that's what I mean to say when you can't play this game with friends is that if you play with one other person, this game works great. But if you try and add anybody else to the system, there's always somebody that's gonna get left out and either, you know, not feel like they're part of the group or something of that nature. And it really does suck. And I really, really wish that they would have implemented it better, but this system is is good in a lot of ways, but bad in many more. Now, those of you that think that it'll change by the time that this game comes out, there's one major flaw in that philosophy, and that's the fact that a lot of this game was designed around the partner system. A lot of this game. One of the bigger examples is the spawn times. If you are with a friend and you die, it is literally two seconds, damn near two seconds by the time that you die, and you're on the battlefield again. And if you were to have a squad of four people that were doing that constantly, this game would be unplayable. Now, a lot of you are thinking that they can just change how long it takes for you to spawn, but there are a lot of design choices on the other side of how long it takes for you to spawn, like how big the map is, how many people are playing on the map, and things of that nature. So they would basically have to do a complete overhaul of some of the game mechanics just to lengthen the time that someone can spawn, because it wouldn't be as action-y as it is right now if you couldn't spawn every two seconds. Now one of the good things that does come out of the partner system is that they decided to make the design choice for only a two second respawn timer, which is actually really cool. It keeps you in the action. It keeps you having fun the majority of the time. But it's difficult for me to have fun if I'm not playing with my freaking friends. That's why I say that this game was more developed towards the person who doesn't have a group of friends and just kind of plays on and off all the time just with random people. So now that we're off that subject, one of the things that I'd like to talk about is the fact that every single thing in this game is a battle pickup. Back in the previous game, if you wanted to be a hero, you didn't just happen to stumble upon it, even though you're 0 and 39. You had to work for it. You were rewarded with the ability to play as Darth Vader. Instead of some random schmuck getting it, using it, wasting it, you actually had someone who could do some damage as one of the heroes. Now, I understand why they made this choice. They made it easier for newer people and people who probably aren't as skilled to be able to play as their favorite characters from their favorite universe. And I totally agree with that notion. If you want to play as your hero, but you're not very great at the game, there should be a way that you can play as your hero. And I honestly feel like that there should be a game mode where there are just heroes battling each other. I feel like that would be a really cool game mode for them to have in this game. If I'm not mistaken, it was in the previous games. So I really do hope that they add that to this game. But if you are playing the objective, you don't feel rewarded whatsoever. You feel kind of pooped on because this dude who is 0 and 39 is running around as Darth Vader and dying immediately all the time while you're over here slaying your butt off, getting those kills 
getting those objectives and just working your ass off and you d it just doesn't feel rewarding. And I'm not exactly sure how to fix that because if you were to add a killstreak system, I feel like it would be more towards people just working for killstreaks instead of actually playing the game. So I honestly don't know how to fix this. But I do feel like if it's, you know, a normal game mode like Conquest or this uh, Walker Assault, those people who do well and actually play the objectives and get those kills and get those objectives should be rewarded somehow and my opinion should be with heroes. As I was saying before, everything in this game is a pickup and it's completely random on whether or not you'll be able to get to play what you wanted to play. And when it comes to some of the defensive pickups such as the mine or the platoon shield, I honestly feel like those should be something that a class should spawn with. Having to rely on someone on the battlefield happening to pick something up that you need at that particular point is kind of dumb. And like I said, this could somewhat be solved by having a class system. Now when it comes to star fighters and X-Wings and A-Wings and TIE Fighters and Advanced TIE Fighters and Interceptors and all that jazz, I really do like how they implemented them into the game along with the way that you get them. In Battlefield 4, having to wait in a spawn screen for one of your favorite things to spawn, it can be pretty tedious and you're not actually helping out your team. Whereas in this game, if you notice, oh, there's no X-Wings available near me, let me go ahead and just kind of play the game and hopefully next time I spawn within that two second respawn time, there will be something available. I really do like that design choice and the way that they've implemented them and how powerful they are against ground vehicles, it really does balance out a lot of the different issues that I have with the game. Now one of the bigger issues that you may have noticed if you played the beta is that vehicles for the Empire side are very, very powerful against the Rebels, because the Rebels basically don't have any vehicles. But I do think that in the released game, there will be equipment that can more easily take out the ATSTs, the Chicken Walkers. In fact, right now, if you get the Ion Grenade, you can take out one third of one of those things' health. I think it's somewhere around 40%. And I am hoping that the Ion Torpedo, which is available in the survival aspect of this game, will be available online for you to use on a multitude of vehicles and it basically wrecks just about everything. It can take out three-fourths of an ATST's health and you know you don't really need anything else after that. Probably a ion grenade and that's done. Like one torpedo, one ion grenade. I bet you could take out an ATST easy with that. Something that's a little gripe and it's more of just a I noticed this thing about the game is that everyone can have a jetpack and if you go back to the lore of Star Wars and if you go back to the even the old Battlefront games there were only certain classes that could have jetpacks. Now I don't want them to take jetpacks away because that's actually the thing that I use the most. It's a great tool for getting around and it really does add a lot of fun and interesting gameplay to the actual game and I'm really glad that they actually did make it available for everything but it's just something that wasn't in the previous games that is in this game. Now something else that might be different when the game comes out is that every side has the exact same weapons. Like if you want to use the gun that I'm using now, which is the A280C, you can use that on both the Empire and the Rebel side, which if you were to actually go back into everything, they didn't have access to those weapons. But I can see for parody's sake why they did it. If you go back to Battlefield Hardline, they got a lot of crap because some of the good guns were available for one side and not the other. So I can see why they wouldn't want to make that mistake again, but it does kind of kill the illusion that you're Empire versus Rebel. So one last bad thing about the game is that this game sadly does not have a server browser. Now this wouldn't be an issue if everything worked. If we go back to Battlefield 4, a lot of the features of that game did not work on launch. One of them being the fact that you had a very hard time opening up Battlelog and just joining friends in general. So what you would do is basically go, oh, I'm on this server, type these few things into your search bar on your server browser, and now you've found our server and can join and get into a squad together and play together. But this game does not have that. On PS4, you cannot have a partner unless you guys are in the same chat party on your PS4. And as many of you may know, the PS4 chat party system went down for a whole day 
in the middle of the Battlefront beta, which means that for a whole day out of the ridiculous five days that we could play this game, we couldn't play with friends. That would have been the most perfect time to actually have a server browser, and that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. It has nothing to do with the game actually being broken, but there's a lot of different things outside of the game that you cannot calculate for. And also, the whole having to be in a chat party thing is completely stupid. I like to play with my friends and talk on Skype at the same time and we don't want to have to bother with the PS4 chat thing because of NAT type issues and all this and that. If you're a PS4 owner, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It really is disappointing to see this game go down the route of a matchmaking system instead of an actual server browser because that means that in the long run of this game, it's not going to be as popular and you're not going to be able to play it as long as you want to. It'll probably be two years before something happens and they either shut down the servers or there's nobody playing it to the point where you just can't play the game because you can't find a match. Especially on PC where Battlefront 2 still has somewhat of a healthy community. There's like at least 300 people playing that game at any given time and you can actually use third-party programs to connect to people using the server browser that's built into Battlefront 2. That is a crazy thing to think about that you won't be able to do with this game. So now that we're done pooping on this game, let's talk about some of the things that I really do enjoy about this game. The graphics are by far the best thing that I have seen on PS4. Now take that into consideration that I haven't played The Last of Us, uh, and I hear that that game had really good graphics, but I'm just talking about the games that I've played Battle before all that this game has impeccable graphics the fires look damn near realistic and everything just fits together really nicely and I'm really glad at how they put this game together I will never get sick of actual TIE fighters and things crashing into me because it looks so beautiful the gameplay itself is very rewarding and very fun the fact that when you die it's not but two seconds before you can start shooting somebody again. It is a very great feeling to know that there's no real waiting around in this game and that's honestly what I think is kind of making it for me. The fact that I don't have to revel in the fact that I died instead of looking forward to killing the dude that just killed me in a matter of seconds. It does sound stupid when I listen to myself talk about those kinds of things but if you actually get into, say, a Battlefield 4 game and you have to constantly wait, you know, 10 seconds to spawn, it really is a nice refresher to just constantly be in the action. The gunplay is also very satisfying in this game. The fact that you have lasers that have a lead time and that once you kind of get that lead time down, you can kill people so fast and the ability to shoot somebody halfway across the map with your lasers, it's very satisfying to do. And I'm really glad that they have the system that they have in place right now for the actual lasers. Other than it being just a very fun game to play, there's not much else I can say about it. It feels very solid. There's not too many glitches. Uh, honestly, stuff that really doesn't matter whatsoever. It's just a very fun game to play, and I'm glad that I got to play it for even what limited amount of time that I could. If you have any questions, put your question in your comment in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching. If you made it to this part of the video, please put the word Star Wars in your comment in the comment section below so that I know that you watched the video all the way to the end and are the best viewer and a subscriber ever. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Really help me and my channel out. That is all. Basics of flying vehicles in Star Wars Battlefront. Now I'm running under the assumption that you already know what this bar means, but if you don't, it's a visual representation.